This is a complete tutorial for your Jewing Crane 4. I tried to go through most of the features of this gimbal. You will find the timestamps in the description time to quickly reach the subject you're interested in. Firstly, we're going to talk on how to build your gimbal and we're going to insert the tripod. At the bottom of your gimbal, right here, you have a one quarter inch screw thread. You simply want to get your tripod and screw it in there. Once you've done it, you can place your tripod wherever you want. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use my stand, so I'm going to remove the tripod, but you can keep it on, of course. Let's learn how to charge our gimbal. There is an internal battery in the gimbal, so it can be rechargeable as many times as you wish. With the accessories, we have received a bag full of cables. The one we need right now is a USB, normal USB to USB-C. Something looks like this. If we look at our gimbal, the front of the gimbal will have a wheel like this and a trigger button. Keep the gimbal in this way. On the right hand side, at the very bottom, you will find a port with a silicone door. This is our charging port. There is an icon as a battery and a flash. You want to get the USB-C connector, open the door and plug it in there. Of course, you can plug in the USB in a normal electrical socket, or if you have a power bank, you can charge your gimbal through the power bank. And have a look at the monitor here. As soon as I plug in the USB, you will get an icon on your monitor with the battery basically charging. You will see a few lines inside this icon charging up, loading up. When those are still, then the gimbal is fully charged and you can unplug it from the electrical socket and you can unplug everything here, the cables as well from your gimbal. Make sure you close the silicone door at the bottom in case of rain or, you know, water or dust, it's always safe to keep it closed. We'll understand how to lock and unlock the rotation of the motors of our gimbal. Please bear in mind, this process has to be done with your gimbal completely off. You don't want to switch your gimbal on when your motors are locked or before you do anything else, because otherwise you will damage the gimbal. First thing, make sure the gimbal is off. Don't put the camera on, don't do anything. Just unlock it first. We have different locks around the gimbal, some for the rotation of the motors, some for actually sliding the actual arms of the axis up and down. So there are two different things and we're going to check them all. First of all, we start from the rotation of the axis. On each motor of the gimbal, you will notice a text that says the name of the specific motor, which is great because it's so confusing sometimes. And you will have, for example, here the pan axis, as you can see. At the back, this is the roll axis. And then on the other side, you will find the tilt axis over there. When you receive the gimbal, it will be fully locked and you will notice here on the motor the actual lock. There's literally an icon of a lock. To unlock the motors, you simply pull the button or push the button to the icon where the lock is unlocked. And you can see the motor starts rotating now. So this is how we unlock the pan axis, for example. But for the purpose of the balancing, I want to keep it locked, so I simply push it back and this motor is not moving anymore. If I rotate the gimbal this way, you will then find the roll motor. And again, same button, you're going to slide it and unlock this motor right there. I'm going to lock it again. One more to go. This one here is the pan axis. The lock is actually a bit more hidden under the rail between the motor. We slide it and we unlock it and lock it back into place just to learn how to do that. Because now we're actually learning how to mount and balance your camera on top of the gimbal. Now for camera compatibility and lenses, go and check the GWIN website. You will find a list with all the cameras that can actually be mounted on this specific gimbal because not all the cameras and lenses unfortunately will be supported by the stabilizer. Also make sure your camera is completely rigged up. If you need to add a microphone, filters, anything you want to use in this specific scene, you have to do it now 
because whatever you're gonna add later to your camera or lens will change completely the weight and the balance of the camera on the gimbal. Also, if you're using a zoom lens, like a 16 to 35, for example, millimeters, when you zoom in or out, that will change the balance and the weight of your cameras. So the gimbal will not be calibrated for that specific setup. So we need to unlock a lock again, some of the motors we have checked before. The first one we're going to unlock is the one at the back, which is the roll axis right there. So if you remember the lock here, you want to have this arm completely loose now. It will look something like this. Okay, remember the front of the gimbal is the one with the wheel here and the trigger button. You want to lift this arm to the right hand side and you want to have the crane text readable upright. So you don't want to have it this way where the crane tag is upside down, but you want to have it the other way. So to the right and you will be able to read crane correctly. And now we're going to lock the motor again, the roll axis, we're gonna lock it again with the same lock we've checked before, which is now here. And nothing will be moving again. We also want to unlock the tilt axis, which is right there. And the lock is here now. We unlock it, the tilt axis and arm will work as a pendulum. Now we need to get some of the accessories from the bag. We need three plates, which you have seen already on my gimbal because it was already set up, but now the gimbal is free. They might come as a whole, so three plates all together, but also you might find them separate in the bag. This is the first one, we're gonna call it plate one. It's a quick release plate. A longer one, quick release plate number two, and this is the third plate we need. We're gonna start with the small one here and we're going to attach the camera to this plate. So from the bag of the screws, we'll need one of the smaller screws that looks like this. You're gonna take the plate and under the plate, you have this gap. On one side, the gap will have the hole slightly bigger because that's where you want to insert your screw. So find that side and start screwing your screw in until it goes through to the other side of the plate. It will pop up on the other side. Now you take your camera, the back of the plate will be the one with the release button. So this is gonna be at the back of your camera. We screw the plate to the camera just to start with. Now here, you want to have the plate with the release button at the back, as I mentioned, but also the plate has to be on level here, on line with the monitor of your camera. Tighten up the screw and under our gimbal, under the rail of the gimbal here, we actually have a metal tiny coin that we can use as a screwdriver. So take that and just make sure the screw is tight and safe under the camera. Very first step. Now we're gonna take the longer plate, plate number two. The front of the plate will have a hole here. It's a screw thread for the lens holder that we're gonna talk about later. You will also see an arrow pointing back. So this is actually the back of the plate. Keeping the screw thread in the front, like the camera, we slide the camera backward into this rail until it clicks there and it will not move anymore at this point. If you want to remove the camera from the plate, then you need to press the release button here at the back of plate number one, the smaller plate. And you slide forward your camera again. Once the plate number two is in place, then you want to lock it and it should be in line with the back of plate one smaller plate. So when it's safe, you have a lever on the left hand side and you're going to lock this plate. And now it's not moving. Plate number three, on top of the plate, we have another arrow printed. That's gonna be the back of your plate again. It's pointing the back of your plate. 
and also the back of your plate will have a silver lever. You have a black one on the side and the silver one at the back. Same thing here, we get the camera and we slide plate number two, the long one, inside plate number three until it clicks. Right, once the three plates are in level again with the back of the camera, then we're going to lock the side level, which is the black one, and it's all now locked. The last thing we have to do is to place the camera on the gimbal. We have a rail here at the bottom of the tilt axis. We're going to slide plate number three right there with the camera pointing forward. You will hear another click and we're going to move the camera until the side of the camera is touching the vertical arm of the tilt axis right there. So for the moment we don't leave any gap but we might need to readjust this. So move it there. Now we go to the back lock here which is the silver lock. You will see it there. We're going to lock it so nothing will be moving anymore. All safe and secure. We are now going to learn how to balance the camera of, on our gimbal. The Crane 4 can balance your camera in landscape mode and also portrait mode. We're gonna start with the landscape mode. With the gimbal and the camera facing forward, we need to unlock one of the levers we have locked before in the plates here because the camera is completely unbalanced. The first thing we're going to do is to unlock this lever on the second plate and we need to slide the camera forward or backwards until we find the spot where the camera is staying in position, like so. So you don't want to have it too forward or too backwards. Make sure you find this spot right there. When you find it, you're going to lock the lever again. That's the first step. If I spin the gimbal here, on this rail you will find another lock. This lock right there, it's a lever. With this lever you can move the camera up and down now on the rail, so you want to unlock it. And let's say my camera is at the bottom of the rail, like that. So if I tilt the camera up, it, it will not stay because it's completely unbalanced. So with the camera facing upwards now, you want to slide your camera on this rail basically up or down until the camera will stay facing up. So you need to go step by step, little by little and find that spot. You want to be able at this point to point the camera to any direction and you want the camera to stay there. So when you find it, you lock this arm again with the lever we just unlocked. And now if you move your camera and point it anywhere, it should stay there. There you go, that's my spot over there. That's the first motor balanced. We're going to unlock the roll axis at the back as we've seen before. The lock is here. We unlock it and hold the camera because it will go to one of the sides. There's one more lever we want to unlock here at the back on the roll axis, which is this one here. Just pull it up and now you will be able to move this rail from left to right. And we want to do the same thing. You want to find that spot where the camera is staying in position and it's not sliding to the left or to the right. So make sure you hold it and gently my camera is right heavy at the moment, so I need to slide it to the left. If you don't find that spot, go more or less at the middle of the arm. So you lock it in the middle and we are going to readjust the camera on this rail at the front. We unlock it at the back with the gray lever and we go a tiny bit to the left in my case, to find that spot, we lock it back. And now if I move the camera to any position, any direction, 
it will stay. So these two arms are perfectly balanced. We've got one more to go, which is the pan axis motor at the very bottom of the gimbal right here. Make sure we unlock the lever here on the pan axis. So all the motors are now unlocked. On the left hand side of the gimbal, there's another lever for the rail. Now for the arm, we unlock it and we now need to hold the gimbal in our hands. Right, this is going to be a, a bit weird now because this rail is unlocked but what you want it to happen is when you tilt your hand, for example, left or right, the camera should still point forward. See, I haven't found that right spot yet. See, when it starts rotating like that, it's not good. So with the camera facing forward, you want to slide the rail forward or back. There you go, that's my spot until the camera stays there and I'm gonna lock it into place. Let's have a look. That's, that's a good uh, balancing for me. Good stuff, woo! Now, if you're using a zoom lens, which is a bit longer than mine, you wanna attach also the lens holder to your plate. So you know the long plate here? At the front, you will have a screw thread so you will also need this big screw that you will find in the screws bag. You simply put the screw through the holder and you screw it at the front of your plate right there. You basically slide your holder up until you touch your lens and your lens will be here basically. So it's just an extra support for your lens and it will also stop the camera from rotating on the gimbal. Now that we know how to balance our camera in the landscape mode on the Crane 4, I'm gonna show you how you can do it in portrait as well. If you remember at the back of our gimbal here, on plate number three, which was the bottom plate, there's a silver lever at the back. You want to unlock it. And also at the back, there's a silver button, which is the release button and we're gonna slide the camera out of the ray. Very simply now, we take the camera, we place it in vertical mode with the plate number three facing the vertical rail of the tilt axis. We're gonna slide it down here. It will click, there you go. And we're going to lock the back silver lever of plate number three again. Now what you want to do is to go through the steps you've seen before for the landscape mode and rebalance your camera on top of the gimbal. Let's learn how to turn on and off our gimbal. Before you turn on your gimbal, make sure you unlock all the locks of, of the axis, otherwise you will damage the gimbal. On the right hand side of the gimbal, there's a power button which literally says power. You want to press it and Hold it for three seconds and let's do that and have a look at your monitor here. It will turn on as well with the logo of the brand. The first thing you can do now is to choose your language and there's a display here, digital display. You simply choose your language. I go for English. It's a touch screen and then you press go. What I want to show you now as we talked about balancing your gimbal in the previous section is the balance indicators. You will have three different lights on each motor. We have one on the sides of the gimbal, one here on the roll axis and one on the tilt axis as well. If these lights are in white color it means your camera is properly balanced on the gimbal. If they are red it means something is wrong and uh, the gimbal is struggling and it's not properly balanced. So you need to readjust all the different axes. As we are here with the menu open, you will see four different squares with different options. I'm just gonna go through, I think the main feature for you guys and then you can explore yourself with advanced features. But if your gimbal is shaking or trembling, the last icon at the bottom, bottom right, it's settings. We're gonna press on that. 
and you can go to auto calibration at, very, at the very top of the menu. So once you click it and then you choose on start calibrating, your gimbal will start shaking and test the different axes to see if, you know, if it's properly balanced and if it's ready to go. See the roll axis now and the pan axis. So it's checking the three axes. Then the second title here says parameter settings. We wanna press on that and we choose the first option motor torque. This is the strength of your motor. So if your camera is shaking, apart from rebalancing, it means your motors are quite, are quite weak for your camera. So you want to go maybe from low to medium or height for a stronger motor. For my kit, the medium torque is actually fine. 